The case we are discussing now is of a 62-year-old lady who has a history of tobacco use and heavy alcohol use, though has not drank for some period of time, uh, diabetes and hypertension, who presents to her primary care doctor complaining of fatigue. On evaluation, the doctor orders blood tests, serum chemistries, identify some abnormalities in her liver function tests. Her bilirubin is slightly elevated at 1.4. Her albumin is fairly normal uh, at 3.8. Her INR is normal. Uh, her platelet count is 90,000. Her kidney function is normal as well. Her performance status is ECOG-1, so she is fairly functional. And on exam, she has some stigmata of chronic liver disease, such as spiders on her chest, but no ascites and no history of encephalopathy. Given the complaint of fatigue in the setting of chronic liver disease, uh, the patient also has some weight loss. She's referred for imaging. Uh, imaging of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis looking for a malignancy identifies a six centimeter hypervascular mass in the liver. This mass is invading into the right portal vein. There's evidence of enlarged lymph nodes in the abdomen and multiple small lesions in the chest which are concerning for metastases. So the question for us initially is what's the diagnosis? Uh, this is a patient who has evidence of chronic liver disease. The CT scan shows a hypervascular mass. There's some evidence of portal hypertension, both on imaging with small varices, uh, as well as on the lab tests indicating thrombocytopenia. In the setting of chronic liver disease, this patient can be diagnosed with hepatocellular carcinoma. They have a hypervascular tumor in the setting of chronic liver disease. As far as the stage of this tumor, uh, we start to get concerned because there's some findings that are consistent with an advanced tumor. In liver cancer, we don't use the tumor known metastases staging system or the TNM system so much as other staging systems that take into account not only the tumor extent, but also the underlying liver function. So we know that the risk factor for liver cancer include anything that leads to chronic uh, liver disease. Uh, therefore, patients should generally be screened for liver cancer, and unfortunately, this patient who has a long history of alcohol uh, abuse uh, was not identified as having liver disease and was not screened uh, to find this tumor earlier. Uh, this patient presented fairly late uh, with evidence of advanced disease. Still, her liver function is fairly well preserved. Uh, you know, regardless of the etiology of liver cancer, such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C, or alcohol, or metabolic causes, there are always a subset of patients who present with well-preserved liver function. Uh, those are the patients we want to find. Uh, hepatitis B patients, because of the mechanism of the viral infection, uh, are more commonly less cirrhotic at presentation. That's in contrast to hepatitis C. Uh, patients with alcohol liver disease do have some ability to recover liver function uh, if they stop drinking. So it is not necessarily uncommon for someone who has stopped drinking or has a history of alcoholism in the past to still present with well-preserved liver function as this patient did.